Hi there, my name is Paul Moyes and this is a caricature commission in oils that I did last year. As you can see it's a long way off being an oil painting just yet. I started the sketch in Photoshop and I've now printed it off and I've got to transfer this onto my MDF board. And to do this I need to cover the back with a layer of graphite so that when I trace from the other side that's going to come through onto my gesso board underneath. I trace with a ballpoint pen so I can get a nice solid line underneath. Here I'm preparing my painting surface with a wash of burnt umber and thinner and this will get rid of the white and give me a nice mid-tone surface to paint on. I think it's important to stay faithful to the person you're drawing and with this commission Gina and Jody have a great passion for their garden so I wanted the garden to play a prominent role in this painting. So the next step is to block in the foreground figures. I'm using a medium flat brush for this and I use this brush for most of the blocking in process. We've got a long way to go with this painting so we're going to speed it up a bit and I'll take you through every step. So when blocking in the teeth I have to be pretty methodical. It's important that they're in exactly the right place in relation to the rest of the face. Even though I have the sketch as my guide I still have to be aware of that structure. So at this point it's important to avoid rendering with any detail. So I'm going to stick with this medium flat synthetic brush for as long as I can. So this stage is literally about filling in gaps. Mixing colours, putting them in the right place, and not getting too hung up on any mistakes you might make, and moving the piece forward. So my palette for this is ivory black, titanium white, cadmium red, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and some cadmium yellow and magenta for certain elements like the flowers in the background. So I want to make it clear that this isn't my only way of painting. Working from a detailed sketch helps both me and the client get a clearer picture of the end result, but sometimes I like to paint without a sketch at all. When working with these kind of constraints I think it's important not to get too connected to the original sketch. Often when I finish a painting I'll look back at the sketch and see how many things have changed. But then, as you'll see at the end of this video, when we compare the sketch to the final painting, those differences are fairly small. So in my view, it's vitally important to have complete confidence in your sketching ability. And I can't emphasize that enough. To be able to paint, you have to be able to draw. Or more specifically, to be able to paint with a good understanding of anatomy, you have to be able to draw and understand anatomy. So when I was doing the photo shoot with Gina and Jody, we were discussing about their clothes and whether to uh, change the clothes or just keep them in, in what they were wearing. And uh, Jody was wearing his t-shirt, Keep Calm and Play Dead, with a, a picture of a, a man uh, staying calm whilst being attacked by a bear. And uh, I thought it was really funny, so um, he was happy to keep it on and we decided to keep it in the painting. I think it's good to keep things like that in because it gives you a better picture of their personality. Another element that had to be kept in was the foxglove flower, which you'll see more of later. For now I'm trying to block in as many areas as I can and just really fill out the whole painting with areas of colour and trying to lay down as much paint as I can and get every area filled in. At this stage I tend to work in short bursts of around 10 to 20 minutes long. I find it gives my brush strokes a sense of spontaneity. So when it came to painting Gina's dress I had a decision to make because the colour in the reference photo and the colour of her dress on the day was kind of leaning towards purple. It was a, a very intense reddish purple and that colour wouldn't have harmonised well with the rest of the painting. So I chose to stick with a standard cadmium red and just call it down with a hint of titanium white and ivory black. Once I've finished blocking in, it's time to start rendering the faces and other elements. So first I'm going to focus on Jody. I'm always fascinated by how someone's expression can change the way they look. If you look at photos of Jody with other expressions and or from other angles, it would look very different. But this expression, I thought, said a lot about his personality. 
Here I'm using a round sable brush, size double zero, and I'll use this for the rest of the rendering. So here I'm working on the teeth, and teeth can be a lot of fun, especially when you've got a set like Jody's, where some are going forwards, some are going backwards, and you've got that one in particular that juts forward over the lip. So I want to talk briefly about rendering and how much to do it and how far to go. I tend not to go into too much detail. I think it's important to study the forms and as long as you've done that then that's all that's needed. I think it's unnecessary to spend hours and hours labouring over each and every pore uh, just for the sake of doing it. You know, it can be impressive to see hyper-realism and it might be great for some but it's just not for me. As long as I'm getting the message across, that's fine for me. So even though this video is about transferring a digital sketch into an oil painting, I'd like to talk a bit about caricature. So why do I do it? Well the main reason is for attention. When I was at school I would draw the teachers and get a lot of laughs. Especially in chemistry. I found chemistry really boring but thankfully the teacher had a really interesting face. But also when I was in my early teens there was a show called Spitting Image in the UK and even though I found some of their likenesses a little bit questionable I was bowled over by how far they took the concept of caricature. And even though my work's nowhere near as exaggerated as theirs I doubt I'd be doing it today if it wasn't for that show. So that's enough about caricature, let's focus back on the painting. I'm finishing off rendering Gina's teeth and gums and I want to be careful not to get too much black in with my mix so that it becomes too dull or or dark. I want to keep the colour temperature fairly warm. I'm almost finished rendering the faces now but before I go back and put some finishing touches to those, I want to add in some more of the background elements. So you might notice there's a, a fence in the background. This was in some of the reference photos and it was a part of the garden, but this was one of those times where it was important to listen to feedback. My fiance pointed out that it made the composition unbalanced and even though I resisted it for a while, I was kind of on the fence, if you'll pardon the pun. In the end, I gave into it and I agreed that it had to go. So it went. So I'm just adding some finishing touches to the faces now. Some of the values need to be darkened, especially around the creases in the cheeks, those laughter lines. And once we're finished with that, we're going to see the final reveal. But first I'd like to say thank you to Gina and Jody for this commission. And I hope they get years of pleasure from it hanging in their home. So there you have it, from digital sketch to finished oil painting. And if you like this video, remember to subscribe. And also, you can check out more work at my website. And here are some more things that I've done. Thanks for watching.